from the first men, to the age of heroes and the dawn age, to the long night, here is a complete timeline of the events in Westeros and Essos. Before the coming of men, the lands of Westeros are inhabited by children known as the children of the forest, as well as giants and other magical creatures. In 12,000 BC, which stands for before the conquest, the first men invade Westeros. They cross the Arm of Dorn, bearing weapons of bronze. In a futile attempt to end the invasion, the children use the Hammer of the Waters to shatter the land bridge, creating the broken arm and the island chain known as the Stepstones. The first men are far more numerous, larger, stronger, and more technologically advanced than the children who tried to resist the invaders using their magic and obsidian weapons. It proves unsuccessful, and the first men gradually push deeper and deeper into Westeros, establishing hundreds of kingdoms. In 10,000 BC, the signing of the pact. After years of warfare, the first men and the children of the forest come to a standstill and finally agree to a peaceful coexistence, signing the pact on the Isle of Faces. This pact gives the first men dominion over the open lands and lets the children keep control over the forested areas. In time, the first men adopt the worship of the old gods of the forest. Also in 10,000 BC is the Age of Heroes, which was later named this for the great men and women who lived in the years of peace and prosperity following the forging of the pact. The pact endures for nearly 4,000 years, and in that time the children of the forest and the first men grow closer. In time, the first men set aside many of their cultural differences to embrace the ways and the customs of the children of the forest. Many of the noble houses of West Westeros today trace their lineage back to the Age of Heroes. This was the time when grand historical figures are said to have lived, such as Brandon the Builder, who was the founder of House Stark, Lan the Clever, founder of House Lannister, or Garth the Gardener, the founder of House Gardener in the Reach. Also during this time, Storm's kings of House Durandon arise in the Stormlands, aligned with figures such as the founding Durin Godsgrieve, supposed builder of Storm's End, and the Grey King rules the Ironborn of the Iron Islands. Around 8000 BC or 6000 BC, according to different accounts, is the Long Night, the Building of the Wall, and the Night King. So the Long Night in this time Night seems to last for a generation, and the longest, coldest, and darkest winter descends on Westeros. The ice spreads down from the north and under the cover of darkness. The others invade Westeros from the outermost north, marching, killing, and raising up the dead to be their servants in unlife and nearly destroying all men in Westeros. The long night comes to an end with the battle for the dawn. The children and the first men unite to defeat the others with dragonglass weapons, with the Night's Watch pushing them back into the frozen reaches of the far north. Legendary figures from this time include the last hero and Azor Ahai, who wields a great sword of fire Lightbringer. These events are believed to have occurred between 8,000 and 6,000 years before Aegon's conquest. Also during this time, the building of the wall, with the others defeated. Bran the Builder, with the aid of giants and the first men, and perhaps the children of the forest, raises the wall, a monumental fortification of ice and ancient magic, to shelter the realms of men from the menaces of the north. The sworn brotherhood of the Night's Watch guards the wall, and it is said that Bran the Builder also builds Winterfell during this time and becomes the first king of winter and founds House Stark. Around 6000 BC or 4000 BC is the foundation of the faith and the coming of the Andals. In the hills of, what, of Essos, a new religion takes shape, the faith of the seven. Supposedly, seven deities appear to Hugh of the hill, inspiring the Andals for their invasion of Westeros. The Andals cross the narrow sea and make landfall on its eastern shore at the fingers in the veil. They come under the banner of the Faith of the Seven, with seven-pointed stars carved into their chests, wielding weapons of steel. They fight both the First Men and the Children of the Forest, 
sweeping the land much like the first men did thousands of years before. When the Andals crossed the narrow sea from Essos, some sources indicate 6,000 years ago, and some claim it was 2,000 years before the conquest. But for centuries, the Andals' war with the first men and the children is an attempt to drive them out. One by one, the six southern kingdoms fall, and most of the weirwoods are destroyed. Only the north remains under the rule of the first men, in large part due to the strategically located fortress of Molt Kalin, resisting multiple attempts to take it, and therefore serving as the door between north and south. Though the north remains secure, the children of the forest begin their slow withdrawal from the lands of men, retreating deeper into the forest and north of the wall. The Iron Islands fall to the Andals a thousand years after the beginning of their invasion of Westeros, ending the line of kings of the Iron Islands, which originated from Euron Greyjoy. Unlike in the other regions, however, Andals are assimilated to the native beliefs of the Old Way and the Drowned God. The Age of Valyria Around 8,000 or some say 5,000 BC is the rise of the Valyrian Freehold. While Westeros was recovering from the Long Night, in Essos, the peaceful sheep herding folk of the Valyrian P Peninsula find dragons layering in the 14 flames, an immense chain of volcanoes extending across the neck of the peninsula. The Valyrians tame the dragons with magic, which gives them the means to gain influence over the area. The Valyrian Freehold is established, and in its capital, Valyria, magic flourishes. Topless towers rise toward the heavens where dragons soar, stone sphinxes gaze down through eyes of garnet, and smiths forge swords of legendary strength and sharpness. The Giscari War The Giscari Wars end with the fifth war in which Old Gis is utterly destroyed by the Freehold, as to ensure there would be not a sixth war. The Valyrians destroy the city walls and streets with dragon flame, and salt and sulfur the fields. With the Giscari Empire shattered, the Valyrian Freehold expands its influence over the surviving slaver cities of Slaver's Bay. Following the defeat of the old empire of Gis, the Freehold seeks to expand their territories. The Andals who had been living in Andalos travel west to flee the upcoming Valyrians and prevent slavery. They first land in the fingers of the Vale of Arryn, from there, they spread all across Westeros. Around 3700 BC, a thousand years, the Andals who invaded Westeros look toward the Iron Islands. There, they extinguish House Grey, Grey Iron, who had ruled the Iron Islands for a thousand years. In 1436 BC, a sect of religious dissidents leave the Freehold to establish a temple upon Loras' main isle, becoming the first inhabitants of the city that becomes the free city of Lorath. In 700 BC, the Roynish Wars. With the destruction of Old Gis, the Valyrian Freehold's slow westward expansion brings it into conflict with the Roynish cities along the Great Roin, a vast waterway. This series of wars between the Freehold and the Roynar starting around 700 BC, with the first total war lasts for some 250 years and ends with the Second Spice War. Around, also around 700 BC, the Roinar migration, Prince Garen the Great raises an army of a quarter million strong to oppose the Valyrians, but fails utterly against their dragons. Following the defeat of the Roinar, in the Second Spice War, Nymeria, a Roynish warrior queen, evacuates the survivors of Garen's war, mostly women and children, on 10,000 ships, eventually seeking refuge in Dorne in southern Westeros. There, Nymeria forms a marriage alliance with Lord Morse Martell, and together they finally organize the land into one realm, establishing House Martell as the ruling house of Dorne after Nymeria's war. Moors adopts many Roynish customs, and the unification of Dorne under Nymeria and Moors leads to new conflicts with the kings of the Reach and the Storm's kings, expressed through raids, skirmishes, 
and the occasional wars over the centuries. In 314 BC, the Valyrian Freehold annexes a small island at the mouth of Blackwater Bay, off the east coast of Westeros. Using arcane arts, they build a castle whose towers are shaped to look like dragons, giving it its name, Dragonstone. 200 years later, in 114 BC, the migration of the Targaryens takes place. In 114 BC, the migration of the Targaryens takes place. Following a dream of his daughter Daenys, Lord Aenar Targaryen decides to leave Valyria with his family and all their belongings. They then settle on Dragonstone. Twelve years later, the Doom of Valyria takes place. The nature of the Doom is unclear, save that heavy volcanic and seismic activity are involved likely due to the 14 flames, the mountains where the dragons were first discovered. The Valyrian Peninsula is shattered, and the city of Valyria is laid waste, although not completely destroyed. The dragons of Valyria are virtually wiped out, and the Valyrian Freehold crumbles apart in the Century of Blood. Its various city-states break apart, asserting their independence, and surviving to this day as the Free Cities and the Cities of Slaver's Bay.